can be easily verified a very, very long-term thing. Um, but I do think security is not just like just from the case. It's like multi-dimension. Like for example, like EVM is secure because you deploy a contract, you trust EVM, you trust this virtual machine model. This trust comes from like you know billions of dollars it has secured. So it's actually multi-dimensional. It's not just like EVM one single dimension. So I think what we are we have working on is that not just ZK but also SGX proof to like okay. So even if ZK circuit has a bug, some bug, you you have a orthogonal like you know SGX as another attestation. Like you know you have to kind of trust that both ZK circuit has some bug and also Intel is like trying to do something bad or software has some problem so that it's 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 unsecure. So and, and uh, another thing like in terms of like the, our security roadmap. I think it's like actually like for modification for the KVM. I think this is something like actually EVM Foundation is also actually pushing for. Uh, I know they, they, they recently just set up a form modification for the key virtual machine and how eventually the KVM can be applied to EVM layer one. Mm -hmm. I think because I think the end game for, for EVM, right? Like, you know, think about really long term is that they want to enshrine the KVM into their layer one. And then eventually the, the social consensus of, of, of layer one EVM can take over like if the KVM implementation has bugs. Like layer one will kind of help you, you know, solve that from their own social consensus, and layer two can directly use the KVM, and then like don't need to totally remove the multi-sig because right now the reason why layer two is not very aggressively removing their multi-sig and being very immutable is that because there can be bug. But if this kind of like pressure can move to like the social consensus of Ethereum, then like the security problem can be actually solved, and layer two can become like multi-sig free, and then and and also this happened to like you know because if ENS is adopting this approach then it can also be you know, very, very secure. So this, I, I think this is my opinion in terms of like layer two security. So firstly, it's ZK, and second, it's like multi-prover. Third is that eventually there can be more formification, and eventually even like social consensus of ECM is going to help solving this, this problem. And then like uh, the next thing is around like, I think uh, around decentralization. I think we are actually working on this decentralization for firstly decentralized prover and decentralized sequencer. Uh, I do think like, so in terms of like decentralized prover, I think the, the, the I, I think as far as you have more prover to kind of like you know, you have like larger stake from like the mining pool and all those kind of because I think right now like we don't have a, like we haven't released our SDK yet, but after we release, I do think like with with more chance joining and sharing the same the same prover, and I think it's even from operation ability like you know if you are running a very customized like prop, like the prover all the kind of running costs because we have been operating the chain, we know like how much. You know, overhead that is to kind of like you operating your own like mining and fragmentation and all those services. I think if it can be shared, not only just the cost, operation cost, but also like the, the finality can also be improved because if there are many proofs like generated from many chains and that you can easily, and with a similar type, it's way easier for proof fragmentation to be done like in that way. So I think that's one like, you know, one on the decentralization side, but also on the cost and also on the finality side. So that's something like we are working on, actually working on the, the prover decentralization and also sequencer decentralization eventually. Um, but right now, I think all the kind of bottleneck, like you know, uh, like all the kind of ZK wrap match, uh, also similar problem as, as E mentioned, it's the essential resistance problem because there's always a problem of like if on layer one you enforce some really really bad transaction, like for example the transaction with like you know numerous like catch up hash function and all those stuff, and then you literally can't prove that. I think what one thing like maybe we can customize for in is that maybe we can customize for if you are interacting with this specific contract and then like we can kind of like open this force inclusion even earlier than like a full force inclusion so that we can make sure that for most of the majority of ENS use case uh, like you can open the force inclusion and later like when we t move to like a continue something called continuation which is that prove unbounded computation basically we can chunk any computation if, regardless how large that is into smaller chunks and then we can kind of prove one by one so basically like even for the really bad transaction the problem is not like we can't prove or we can't process it just take a longer time or take slightly higher gas fee if you really want to attack but for normal use case it will be fine so that's my, my sense for force inclusion. It will eventually be added. It's already on the roadmap. I think maybe like you know, end of, before the end of this year, we can, we can add this and move into another stage for sensor resistance. Um, but that's my point for like, you know, sensor resistance. If ENS want to customize, I think we can even customize for if you are interacting with specific contracts and maybe that can, the interactive pattern can be way easier because there won't be that many generic corner cases. So I think that's in terms of sensor resistance. And the one last, last thing is that um, we, 
among all the kind of zk drop, I think even from, like I'm also quite, quite surprised from the ES, actually the, the research table from ES is that uh, we are like have way shorter finality among all the kind of zk drop. Even like it's linear or they think they, they take eight hours or like 24 hours to finalize, but we take the trade-off, which is quite different, is that we can accept slightly higher gas fee, but we want to finalize like as soon as possible. Like our, our, right now, like our commit time is every like one or two minutes. And you can see from there to beat, and the finality time it takes just one hour, um, because this is aligned with our roadmap for like because we want to be the fast finality and become the kind of basically the, the central hub for all the kind of layer two can communicate, you know, through this hub. Like uh, another another like direction we are we are working on, like you know, very similar to ENS is called Key Store, which which is basically you put your keys on a rollup, and then you also kind of like aggregate keys, you know, through this rollup, and then other rollup can access. So imagine you have like smart contract account on multiple different chains, similar to like you have you use the same EIS identifier across multi, multiple different chains. You kind of register only at one place, and then this place can do all the update and uh, and all those stuff, and then other chains can read from this. So I think we are we are working on this like this pattern, and then like even like together with Axiom, we we are working on a, a new precompiler called Layer One S Load. So basically, this Layer One is already RIP just published recently, and it allows like any rollup to access any layer one as the like story slot very quickly so that you don't need to even pay, worry about the Merkle pass verification like in your contract. You can just directly read any, read any story slot from layer one. So that, that's, that's basically, you know, I'm, I'm talking too much in different category, but the PLDR is that in terms of security, I think we, are, we have very solid roadmap in terms of enhancing your security. In terms of decentralization, we want to decentralize prover first and sequencer first, and then like, you know, Eventually, like I think, um, like for censorship resiliency, that can be even added earlier if you are not really pursuing for real-time censorship resiliency. And then, last thing is around like this kind of finality. I think we are positioned uh, like very uniquely in this kind of layer two space to be really fast finality, and then for other layer two to kind of have read access and then eventually update uh, those those type of things. Because we think like the the interoperability might happen in a more asynchronous way, like like other layer two can read this as a as a database, and the, which is very aligned with with a kind of like position of, of ENS. And I, I do think like, in the, you know, I think it's, it's essentially if you want to deploy like ENS version two in an earlier stage, because uh, the, the way I think about mean my rollup versus a generic rollup is that I think mean my rollup will come, but it's like in maybe like two or three years or five years time frame because all the kind of components, decentralization, RPC, all those stuff like explore need to be highly customized. That's a lot of, lot of like infra work. We do think that's that's something like very very ideal. Like eventually people will move to that. But as a training well, I think if you want to be faster go to market, you can kind of like trying to deploy a rollup and explore the success pattern. And because the rollup will eventually also have interoperability, and then like this can be like some training well, and then eventually maybe moving to like more and more minimized and more and more security driven. And especially you know like in early stage, if you commit to something like very very immutable very early, that will be very hard to change. But if you commit to something like more generic, and then later you move to a, you, your code base and your structure, your architecture become more stable, you can move to a less, like a more immutable stage, basically. I think that's a pattern where I think, you know, even like, you know, our, our training wheel for a lot of those a similar type of application is like, even they can deploy firstly on scroll and then other application can access without even deploying their rollup. And the second stage will be like moving this content to either layer one or like, the second stage will be moving all your contracts or your content on layer one, and then layer two only have update access. So it doesn't, like it's not everything happening on layer, layer two, but layer two only doing the update, or batch the computation, and update the information on layer one. And the third stage will eventually moving from this layer one to a layer two. And once the minimal rollup can really kind of become a thing. But then like even before that, like you can try EVM and the generic rollup first, and then eventually we can, you know, have some standard for like, because another thing for me and Rob is that it's very hard to reach any standard. So imagine like you launch a very special like data structure for a storage. Like if other layer two want to read, have read access to this, it's very hard for them to implement a specialized precompile for because if you use this kind of specific tree and then they want to have some kind of layer one as load type of precompile similar to what I maybe mean, called layer two as load. And then it's very hard to standardize because there are no standardized for like which tree layer two should use. So that's why I think it's very early to kind of commit to this. And then like, I think we can eventually we'll move to this, but I think at the same time, I think it's like choosing a fast finality and a high security layer two, and then like using such a stack, and then later moving to this will be a like nice, you know, like the way, like gradually how you move there. Yeah, but yeah. 
Uh, earlier you mentioned relying on uh, layer one social consensus in order to remove admin privileges. Uh, and I still wake up in the night screaming the Dow. Uh, so are, are you able to give a little bit of an overview of, of what you had in mind? Like how would that work in practice? Uh, in terms of like how we compare? How would, you, how would you go about relying on layer one social consensus in order to, to minimize admin rights on layer two? Uh, going to, you mean like how we minimize the like difference or like? Well, earlier on you, you talked about that as a route to minimizing admin rights. And I'm sort of curious how that would work in practice. Like what would it look like to do an L2 upgrade relying on L1 social consensus? Um, so I can maybe explain like, you know, the, uh, what's what like right now, like what, what, what uh, at least what I, what I know from like what ECN researchers are working on. So they want to try to kind of use the KEVM to prove for every block of, of their kind of block. So eventually block builder not need to just generate block, but also generate the KVM proof attesting to this kind of block saying like this is valid. And then the, the proof will not be verified in smart contract, but in the protocol layer. The protocol layer will handle the proof verification for, for that. At that time, like, you know, you can maybe read the, the gas limit for, for ECM block and, and all those. And then, so if, in, and then like, I think they also plan to add an EVM opcode to specifically tied to like how they verify the proofs of, of this ZK EVM. Uh, I think Vitalik even has a post specifically talking about how, they, how this roughly work. And then like imagine we are using the same ZK EVM as what, what layer one EVM is using. And then like if in this case layer one like ZK EVM has any security bug, like for example like you can generate a fake proof for, for a certain transaction. And then they need to change the pre-compile or change the protocol to kind of like fix this bug. So that's why you know like all the bugs will be fixed at the same time. I don't know whether that's answer your question, but yeah, that, that's basically like how this kind of enshrining ECM, the KEVM into layer one ECM protocol really work. And that's why we, we see the right path for layer two eventually moving their, removing their multi-sig because you know, eventually you know, all the bugs will be you know, solved on the protocol side or like you know, using this by upgrading this special pre-compile. Okay, so it's more uh, dealing with bugs that affect, you know, across yes, the yes, L2 Yes, yes, it's more, more right. bugs and, and, and those. Do, do you not see then that some degree, of, or think that some degree of admin rights will be needed to support upgradability of L2s then? Uh, what, what a bit? Uh, are we not still going to need some degree of admin or, or multi-sig access in order to be able to support upgra L2s upgrading to, to support new functionality? So I think if we really move to that stage, I, I think we don't need like any layer to like this, this multi-sig. It's some, like some rollup can choose to kind of like remove this multi-sig if they, they, they are the, exactly the same, the KVM. Because, because the multi-sig only involved with the bridge contract and verification, you can still upgrade your node. But let's say like you have the key virtual machine, which is a generic proving backend for any, any code. And then like you can still update your node, but you, do, you, you don't need to touch the multi-sig for the verification part. It depends on the, the layer two choice. Especially if ES long term want to be less like immutable, like maybe it can be even the first one to remove the multi sig. And then, but for some layer two, if they still want to add features, maybe they will still keep this. But for some, if they want to kind of totally be exactly the same as layer one ECM, they can remove if it's a security driven like layer two. Uh, so when you mean uh, the social consensus, is about the nodes that are running the layer two, basically. So the upgrade will run through the nodes and not the network itself, like the, the, the contracts on layer one and layer two. That, that's it? Uh, like, yeah, in, in terms of like actual consensus, yes, but I think social consensus of ECM usually include a lot of like, you know, discussions among like, you know, the core developer and their opinion for how to do upgrade and all those stuff. And, uh, but yeah, like basically the client plays a very important role in this stuff. But th this is very, very, still very, very long term. But I'm thinking like, you know, even ECM layer one, if ECM really see that they, 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 they think there is a path for layer one to adopt that, uh, I do think, and, and also like within this, 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 this kind of like, uh, like pattern, like they are still thinking about multiple different DKVM implementation, which is orthogonal to each other and to enhance the layer one security. So I think that's why I think eventually we'll move to a stage where it's, it's, it's sound enough, it's secure enough, and you don't need to worry about the, the like the specific, uh, yeah. But until we get into this, until we get uh, to the stage, 
uh, will need like an admin somehow to do the protocol upgrades, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before that, we, we still need like layer two need multi-sig and we need some way to try to kind of improve in some other way. For example, we have SJX prover um, and maybe like also add a fraud proof prover. And uh, so it's a security come from like orthogonal of like not just ZK even, like because ZK provide one side of like mathematical like guarantee for if I write the right code, you know, then it's valid. But if you write, you know, your code has any, any bug, then like it might be bad. So that's why you have a orthogonal way to verify that might enhance your like security a lot. Okay, thanks. I don't know if we need to keep going on the security side. I'm, I'm Daniel, I'm from Scroll as well, working on the ZK uh, Scroll stack stuff. But you know, there's also a lever here that I don't think we're addressing, which is like ENS governance, right? And the token holders voting there. And so there's different layers, right, where you can have like almost circuit breakers from the multi-proof system. So if there's like a cryptographic problem on either side, it's a liveness issue and not a bad state transition. And then for things like upgrades, you could still not have a multi-sig in the context of like three or four special people, right? But have the governance acting on that behalf. And, and then the governance uh, in, at layer one. The, the governance on the layer one will be able to upgrade the protocol, uh, the layer two. Yeah, more or less, because really these layer twos, um, the view of them is like defined by the smart contract on the layer one. We call this the canonical bridge, right? But like basically if, a, if you can't generate a ZK proof that satisfies the smart contract on L1, then it's illegitimate or there's gonna be a hard fork or something else, right? Like then. Everyone has to coordinate like what's happened, what's gone wrong. Um, so governance at L1 is powerful enough at that point if they have upgrade rights to this verifier contract to say like, no, you can't finalize the state of the L2 until you know um, you can pr produce this proof and we can change that. Uh, I would like to give the other L1 teams, uh, L2 teams some, some time as well. So if, uh, Hank. Yep, hi everyone. So at least from a linear perspective, I can give an update on like how we're approaching decentralization. Like firstly, it's super important for us. It is the only way for us to achieve our mission of like building better networks. I even made sure that before we went for mainnet launch last year that we published this decentralization and trust minimization roadmap, which you can see on our website. So it's like very much been like a sort of like guiding star. We're still at a fairly early stage, but we're making good progress. Like concretely, like one of the next steps that we'll be going through is, and again, by the way, all this sort of multi-proof, like adding like SGX and like other provers and security, like totally agree with that formal verification, they're necessary. The things that we're like concretely doing in the short term, so we'll be adding like forced transaction inclusion very soon, most likely in sort of like Q3 or Q4, which takes us to like a stage one roll up. We're then adding a sort of the multi-prover next year, which takes us to more of like a stage two. So in terms of like trust minimization perspective, you're still left with the, the admin keys on the L1, but you can have a sort of 30 delay day delay for, um, for upgrades. If like the EVM needs to evolve and you need to update linear, then there's gonna be a process there to do that while still making sure there is enough um, of like a concern to like protect from like day zero like vulnerabilities. Um, on the sort of decentralization side, so actually decentralizing linear because today it's centralized, consensus is runs the sequencer and so forth as it does for all L2s, um, or as it's the same for all L2s. Uh, basically, like we've been researching really hard on the consensus protocol. We started to like share that with you know different researchers for like early feedback. Um, it's sort of like permissionless POS based on like QBFT. It also has a sort of fallback mechanism, so we'll be using something like a based sequencing. So L1 proposers will be able to submit L2 inclusion lists, and that kind of gives us a you know, better censorship resistance as well, relying on Ethereum. So these are some of like the concrete plans that you know we've been. Pursuing, I think it would like for the ENS DAO and the ENS team, like we'd love to sort of share that research and get your feedback as well if it's something that's interesting for ENS to participate in. Um, but yeah, these are sort of the concrete steps that we're taking over the next sort of six to 12 months. Hi, uh, Chris um, from Offchain Labs uh, at Arbitrum. Um, just wanted to give an update on what we've been working on lately. It's um, we've got uh, 
Stylus VM, which is deploying next month, which is a WASM VM um, that, while may not be relevant for ENS in terms of fast confirmations per se, um, it still could be useful in the case if ENS ever wants to do something in like privacy domain. Um, a lot of people are doing um, homomorphic encryption with WASM using uh, Rust and C primitives, which is Nice. If, if there's any desire in the future to do private ENS, that could be useful. Um, another, uh, we are working on fast confirmations. We currently have a um, solution that's soon ready for um, what's called our AnyTrust technology, which is an Optimium. Um, so it does have some trust assumptions, but it is a two of N uh, trust assumption for however many validators would be running on the uh, any trust network, so it's um, a lot of our um, orbit, we call orbit is kind of our super chain or whatever, it's like our people that are using our stack. Um, if they're doing any trust, they can, you know, they can get fast confirmations even from L3 to L1, but also from L2 if it's deployed as an L2. Um, we have other solutions in the pipeline that are in active research to reduce uh, finality for, um, or fast withdrawals, um, but that will be, that's probably a early to mid next year kind of thing. But um, currently the the thing we recommend is like the AnyTrust uh, fast confirmation, which basically just says that if you have the same validators, like AnyTrust works off of a data availability committee instead of like running on like uh, an avail or, or one of those. Um, so you just make sure that everyone has to sign off on, the committee has to sign off on all the data. And if your validators are the same as your data committee, uh, then you can just trust if they all sign off on it to withdraw instantly. And so that's how we're enabling that because, um, yeah, so that's just verified um, on L1 and then uh, the funds are allowed to withdraw. Um, if anyone has any questions, happy to answer. So, uh, uh, my, m I have a question for the for uh, for the, for, the, for the table, um, and maybe not directly related to to this, but. I think I want to ask people for their thoughts about the finality time requirements that we were setting targets in the previous session. Uh, and I was discussing with Nick. Uh, basically, we were setting a very aggressive uh, finality time. Um, but in a context of today's how wallet address are resolved through uh, ENS and, EN and EVM gateway um, from an end user perspective, uh, what was the reason that we want to set this finality time goal that aggressive because if, let's say, assuming we need the proof to be submitted to L1 um, directly or indirectly, as long as the L1 has not updated it, um, our change, like, is the, that was like the main bottleneck of time reflecting the new state. So that was a question whether either we will set, um, relax the requirement for the finality time of when we choose L2, or do we envision in the future that the resolving will start with our own chain? In that case, um, that's, um, the finale time really does make sense, but then we'll need to think about how proofs should be submitted to ENS L2, um, and then how do you envision that kind of future? Yeah, so basically, if we remain anchored to L1 as our trust route, uh, is there any point in having finality that's a lot faster than L1? You know, if it takes us five minutes to reach L2 finality, but then an hour for Ethereum to finalize, have we gained a lot? Um, and that depends a little on whether we are willing to introduce ENS as a trust route, and I'm generally inclined to say no, because it's already hard enough to get anyone to use a, anything other than Infura for their Ethereum node, much less, you know, another chain. Um, and if we're relying on L1, then are we saying we're okay with non-finalized L1 state, but not non-finalized L2 state, which I think is a defensible position, but it's something we need to, to give thought to, not just assume L2 finality is all we need. I was thinking just to add um, to those uh, uh, points. Um, 
we basically have to choose, in my opinion, uh, which part of the puzzle we, we trust. And there's all of these um, discussions about finality times and L1 and challenge periods and things like that. So I was um, just chatting to someone previously about the fact that at the end of the day, I use MetaMask, for example, and um, MetaMask, when I type in to send um, funds to an address, could just return any value. And in practice, how many people are actually kind of verifying that the resolution pro process as for the, per the specification is being followed correctly. Um, I think there's a race to the bottom in finality times, but is it actually that important when we are trusting um, our clients, basically? Yeah, um, uh, I, I think compared, like, in terms of like layer one and layer two finality, I think one unique thing about this layer two finality is that because if other layer two want to read from your stuff, like you have to kind of already update your state root with a proof. So I think one thing which I think, you know, I also mentioned to the ES team before is that, so there can, if really, really you want like, like you know, for example, every block you want some finalization, uh, it's possible to do. Like for example, you can have, like as I mentioned, like we have like this multi-prover ready for, with SGX proof and DK proof. So like one solution you can have is that you, you post your state root every block, uh, but with a more like, for example, like SGX proof or something like that, which if any application, they trust this earlier attestation, they can access this state root. But if maybe like in another, in the, in the same contract, you can have another like ZK proof finalized state root for some high stake application. If they don't trust SGX or those type of attestation, they can access this state root to kind of eventually read and, uh, and, and doing something there. So this might be like a, a training well solution where you can have really, really fast finality, but you still kind of like uh, have like, it's basically according to applications like preference, they can, they can choose between like which, which they trust. Um, I, I think one thing like which eventually layer one will have like uh, Vitalik and recently is working on like this kind of layer one, shorten layer one, single slot finality, and uh, eventually he envisioned a world where every, you know, like liquid raw post proof every, every slot. So eventually you will have that level of interoperability and all those stuff. And then even before that, I think another choice option is that because the finality, like why you mentioned like layer, layer, different layer tools are choosing different trade off between like how aggressive they are, like why Linia and DigiSync takes like eight hours or like 20 hours to finalize and Starkware for potentially even longer is that because right now, like if you don't have enough throughput, you need to wait for enough transaction to kind of prove and then to amortize from. Because if you only have one transaction every day, then this transaction uh, are unluckily need to pay for the prover cost and verification cost. So only if you get enough transaction to amortize from, then like you can shorten your finite. If every rob like you know have like one thousand or like two thousand TPS like you know requirement demand, then they can easily like you know shorten their finality. So I think during this period of time, like one middle solution is that if for example like using using our like tech stack, we can kind of like maybe doing some formal verify like proof verification or something like that to shorten the finality on both sides because either you have a transaction or I have a transaction, it, we can sidecar some proof verification and to even like shorter the finality time. So I think this is very valuable like because it's basically tied to our main chain security, which we definitely want, don't want to compromise for, but it can also sidecar some of maybe EF proof verification cost and it's also shorten the finality. Yeah. I was, sorry, uh, I was thinking about like, uh, the, uh, the resolve time and the, the latency is not a big deal if things are P2P, basically. And that's the beauty of zero knowledge proofs. Like, you basically query a specific uh, operator to get that information for you. And it will give, and you already know what it is because you can get that chain. So, you know, you know that, that the name resolves to an address, so you give that name and the address. And Every, all, all you get from the operator is just zero knowledge proof that the, that is true. And so if it's true, then that's it. That's the latest you have. You don't need to wait for another block or wait for finality or anything like that because it will return something that's like mathematically true. So you just use Merkle trees of chain. You ju just, you just store um, a root. And I don't know, I, I really, maybe I'm missing this huge point about, the, about ENS, but it seems like we can have, this could be just a, a simple, very simple app-specific rollup, but not necessarily a, a, a new contract in a new ZK EVM or, or, or EVM or, or something like that. It can be just a simple app-specific rollup that just provides uh, just a, a root and a bunch of 
resolvers for that, and you just get the proof that a certain ENS name exists at a certain address and resolves to a certain information and metadata, or whatever. <laughs> so it seems like it's the, the whole concept of just having a new L2 or just deploying it in, in a new L2 is a bit um, kind of an overkill, right? Um, I, I, I don't know, maybe, again, maybe I'm missing the whole point. Uh, I think the, the issue is that, uh, yes, you can provide a ZK proof that the state of a given system is, is a given state, but you also need to prove that that is the state, the, the system that everyone cares about and is observing uh, together. So it's not enough to provide a ZK proof that executing these sequence of operations resulted in the send state and the send state contains the thing you want to resolve because somebody could construct an entire alternate version of your L2 that emits key transactions and so on. So you still have to prove that that is the state that everyone cares about, which is where it comes back to proving that that state is committed to L1 and that that L1 block is finalized, question mark, depends on our, you know, what our security assumptions are here and that sort of plays into to like defaults are really powerful here uh, the you know, EVM gateway can be very flexible in terms of letting users choose uh, how much what their security thresholds are but we are going to have to choose at some point what the default for names is you know is it L2 plus finality plus L1 finality is it L2 plus finality plus n blocks on L1 because you know, L, L1, unlike most L2s, does gain in security is, you know, the more blocks you've, you've got in front of it. Um, you know, at what point are we willing to accept that that's good enough for, for most users uh, that don't make another choice? Yeah, I think they were mentioning in social consensus, and it, it's, it's definitely, a, like, a big deal. And whatever, like, the app decides to wait for that finality to happen on L1 or not, but in any case, right, you can just listen to the network and see and verify that's that's correct. So people are usually shaming on on optimistic change, but that's not. I mean, if you listen to the network, you you can verify that those that uh, transactions are correct. So this whole thing about the challenge period is over, uh, way over overblown, and so I think this uh, definitely you would have to write to some kind of states, and obviously you need to wait for this uh, for this finality. But you could do that directly on L1, and so. Yeah, it would definitely involve more costs. I'm, I'm totally, I mean, uh, this idea, it's definitely has its disadvantages because you have to, uh, like a, an operator writes many names and it could take a while, uh, but that also provides some opportunities for some kind of market where you basically have uh, different operators that involve different costs depending on how many records are they writing into the, into the updated state. So you definitely need to, sequ to sequence them, but you don't need a new L2. Uh, you just need uh, to do things off chain and then prove them and return proofs. So, like the data is there, you know how the data looks like. What you want is a proof that it's true. So, it just uses your knowledge proof. So, you can use a sparse Merkle tree, which is B. Uh, I, was, I was talking about, with, I don't know his name, but about uh, using an index Merkle tree would work as, just as well, I, be I believe. So just, yeah, just start stuff on chain, prove them on chain, that's it. Okay. Yeah, I one, just wanted to share some maybe, last thing. sorry, yeah, I'll share some insights building linear on finality. Like we discovered that the ecosystem did not care that much about finality. So we very like pragmatically said, let's enable it such that, because obviously finality has a trade off against cost as well. So we very much view L2s as almost like traders, like commodity traders, like they buy and sell block space and so, we found that like, if you like, optimize the time at which you finalize, then it's gonna be much cheaper for your users. And actually, when we offered them that trade-off of like, do you want cheaper fees on linear or do you want faster finality, they would choose cheaper fees. So like, it's a very arbitrary thing that you can set. Like, we've built this so you could try and have like, really fast finality if you wanted to you know, trade off a little bit of cost. Or you can actually optimize to make sure that it's the lowest time in the day to actually settle your proof if you're willing to wait a bit longer. Um, so again, like we could arbitrarily for linear like finalize in 30 minutes, but today we wait, you know, up to 24 hours because we're more concerned about making fees cheap for our users than finality. But it's something that you can easily tweak because again, this insight is that each ecosystem is going to be completely different on what it wants. Um, I think that's all we have time for in the, the um, L2 session.